Hey Star Wars fans and collectors, how's it going? Uh, welcome to my first of four videos for the new wave of uh, Star Wars Black Series 6 inch figures based around Solo, a Star Wars story, including uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, I don't think he's going to appear in the movie, but it's, he's part of the wave. Um, the two figures in the wave that I'm not going to be reviewing are the Death Star Trooper and the Jawa. They're number 61. Uh, 60 and 61 so um, I didn't pick up the new versions of them I've got them in the 40th anniversary collection so I'm happy with them at this stage so we'll start in number order we'll go to number 62 which is Han Solo himself uh, young Han Solo there's artwork on the front there by Gregory Titus Looks good likeness to Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo I think he looks like a good good young Han Solo to me, that's my opinion. I work on the back there again. A little bit of a bit of a read up in the bio there. Han Solo reinvents himself after leaving behind his old life. Now Solo is growing increasingly comfortable traveling with lawbenders and scoundrels. So we'll move that one out of the way. We'll look at the action figure himself. Now this is a big step forward. Hasbro has made some more changes, not just to the uh, face deco. There's that sort of digital, digital paint. I'm not sure what else to call it. Digital technology, lot much like our uh, uh, Bandai do, and um, with their SH Fig Arts and the Mafex, they do it the same way. It's all digitally painted, and for the most part, Hasbro have done. This is this is one of the greatest decisions they've done um, for this line specifically. So I, I hope you can see that all right. It seems to be okay on my little view screen here. Um, and my light's a little bit glaring, but hopefully it pays off. So with the, with the Black Series, the scops have always been on point, um, especially with the faces. You see people that can repaint them um, when they come out of the they come out of the factory not so great. People can repaint them and make them look fantastic. So Hasbro giving this extra dose of realness just adds to that and just shows that the sculpt work has been there all along. It's just necessarily it's just the paint work that let it down over time. And uh, yeah, this is no exception. We've also made some small changes to the articulation. Um, which I think is a bonus too. Go through that in a minute, but we'll just get a good look. So he's uh, he's rocking the blue pants with the blood stripe. That's cool to see. Black boots. His, his sort of trademark belt. So I think it's a little different. I'm just looking at the uh, so I feel like that could be a little bit different there. I could be wrong. Perhaps not. He's got his D at rocking his DL44 blaster. I really like this jacket. I think it looks good. Brown, I like I really like just the black pads on the shoulders. Let's see if we can get up close. So pretty good likeness. Hopefully my camera's picking up this as good as it can. <clears throat> Excuse me. So articulation is as follows from the bottom. He's got the uh, ball hinged ankles. They've given him a little bit room with that joint sort of come up the boot a little bit higher. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call that a change, but it's there. Double joints at the knees, the swivel at the thigh, joints at the hips. So we've got that torso joint there with the black shirt, which is nice. Hinge to the wrist, hinge to the elbows, good movement so you can get a lot tighter than that right angle. So it's pretty nice. And the neck is where they've changed it. They're sort of, if any of you guys know um, like the Walking Dead figures, they've got like a double double peg. I feel like there's a couple figures that they may have used this before. Um, I'm just trying to have a quick look at my collection and I can't really pick one out. 
but it's like there's a hollow neck um, with a little ball peg in it and then the peg then extends into the head so instead of they've got rid of that ugly sort of neck joint that we've had on figures and uh, some of them can be quite an eyesore some of them not so bad but uh, they've cleaned that up so that's just another another big point for for Hasbro there they've done well with that I think that's a good move um, so you can get some good movement with the head looking up and it's not sort of off-putting with a crusty looking neck joint underneath so it moves moves nicely and yeah definitely a good figure I'm, I'm a massive Han Solo fan so I'm, I'm really excited for this one I'm really happy to have this one reasonably early too um yeah these figures aren't supposed to hit till april 20th i think is the street date maybe the 13th maybe the week before um but yeah it's now march 1st uh today so it's very exciting i got these yesterday yeah really excited for this movie um and these figures definitely add to that so definitely drop a comment below tell me what you think what do you think Hasbro's doing? Um, one thing I'm not so sure about with the digital paint, it seems to have a high gloss. I'm not sure if my camera is picking that up. You can sort of see a bit of a shimmer on his eyebrows there. Um, hopefully they can look into that and go with a matte. Um, the eyes are sort of a bit bit of a gloss to them, which is nice. That, I think that looks fine, but the eyebrows and some of the face, it's a little bit, little bit off-putting somewhat, but that's okay. So there is Han Solo from Solo, a Star Wars story. Thanks for checking it out, guys. Next up, we've got Grand Moff Tarkin, so stick around. I know that one's been uh, long awaited and it's worth the wait. Trust me, guys. All right, stay tuned for that one. Until next time, may the force be with you.